So I recently uploaded this 3D scan plus panorama scene to Sketchfab where I combined a scan and then I also combined a 360 photo that I took with a drone that was flying right above the scan location. Uh, and then I flattened the ground to make it look uh, like the scan is sitting right on top of the 360 photo and it really created a nice little environment. Um, for you to see both the scan and its surrounding. So um, on Twitter, someone asked me if I could post a tutorial, Ian George, uh, and I thought, why not? So I'll show you the quick process of how to take a 3D model and uh, with a 360 photo, create this little diorama. So I'm gonna assume you have uh, the 3D model done and you also have a 360 photo uh, that was captured above the area itself. So I'm just showing you how to put the two together. I'm gonna be using Blender here, but you could do it in any other 3D software, but Blender is what I am the most familiar with. So I'm gonna start by importing the FBX file. Let's import, or I'm gonna import the 3D model that I have, the, the scan itself. Let's load the texture. Make it flat um, and let's also so to import the 360 photo I am using a UV sphere so create a UV sphere let's also do back face culling so where we can't see through the sphere because the normals are facing outwards so what we have to do is select all Actually, you should be able to see my keystrokes on the bottom left. So insert the UV sphere, go, to, go into edit mode, select all by pressing A, then look for flip normals. That's the one. So then you get out of the edit mode and you should be able to see into the sphere. And if you're not seeing it, make sure you have back face culling turned on. Now what we need to do is add the 360 photo to the sphere itself. So uh, the sphere doesn't have a material, so we'll create one. Then in the base color, we will change it to image texture, open. And I have my 360 photo here and voila. Okay, so that's just a very simple way of adding a 360 photo to the environment. Um, if you wanna do go that extra step that I took, which was flattening the bottom and kind of you know putting the two together so that you have like a little bit of an environment that you can walk around in, uh, let's do that now. So let's go to a sideways view, go into edit mode for the sphere. And I think what I did here is I select the bottom, the lowest ver vertex, and then I turn on proportional editing mode up here, which means if, um, notice how there's like a little sphere now, if I move the scroll, this is the scroll, I'm moving my scroll uh, button, as I move it, it's, it's proportional, it's affecting the other things, the other vertices around it. So uh, what I want to do is kind of create this oval, overly shaped so it's not just a harsh like hemisphere that I cut like straight through the middle. So I'm also gonna move it along the Z axis. Um, I think something like that. Okay, um, and then the other thing I want to do without, before I click away from this middle, um, the middle Ver vertis, uh, the middle vertex, I'm gonna do control numpad plus to expand my selection. You could also do it by doing, I guess not, you can do it by select more. That's what it is, control numpad plus more. Um, so up until, let's go one more, up until here, and I want to basically wanna make all of these flat, all these vertices flat, so I'm gonna do scale, for S, ah, I have to turn off proportional editing. Turn off proportional editing, then do scale Z, zero. I don't know why that showed up as, uh, so it, I'm gonna say that one more time. I'm gonna do it one more time so you guys can see again. Scale Z, I don't know why the key press isn't showing up. Scale, so S, 
Z for the z-axis and zero. And it flattens everything out that way. Cool. Let's take a look how it looks like inside. Yeah, not bad. Obviously the, the road isn't gonna be straight. I know that for sure. Maybe there's a better way of doing this that I don't really know. What I want to do now is make sure my rotations are correct. Rotate it this way. And I think what I'm also going to do is scale it. Ah, oh, you know what? I'm, I'm noticing something. I think. Um, okay, so for some reason, my 360 photo is flipped, as in, or it's mirrored somehow. I, I, I know this because I remember what it looked like. And also, when I compare the two, like the model and the 360 photo, they are mirrored. So what I'm going to do is rotate the sphere along the x-axis. R, uh, what am I doing? Scale x minus 1. Okay, cool. That is now mirrored in the correct way. I'm rotating it to make sure we're right there. And I'm also scaling it. So the reason, by the way, this works is because I took the 360 photo, like quite literally right on top of the 3D model itself. If you take, if you took the photo from over here or over there, obviously this perspective of the ground uh, of the top of the model will not line up like the same way that it's lining up here. So uh, th that's also not that hor not that bad. I think it can still work, but it worked in my favor that I was quite precise about where I took the photo. The last thing we can do is also bring the ground up so that it's touching the ground itself. There's a thing here that the the model the model's topology actually is. Um, you see how it like goes down and up. It's not actually flat. So what I'm just gonna do is. So I just want to, let's say, let's just edit, ah, let's edit the UV sphere and bring down these areas. So I'm going to go back to proportional, ah, wait, I think my, my sphere of influence is way too large. Here we go. There it is. Okay. Is that working well? I'm just going to bring that down. You know what I want to do? I think there's not an, I think I need to subdivide this area. So I'm going to cancel that. So it's all still flat. I want to select this ring and go more at, I don't like that. Okay. I'm going to select this ring. Okay. Here we go. And then let's subdivide. Cool. Okay, so now I have enough subdivision. Let's see. Better. Okay, wait, that's much better. I think I want to bring this part up. Let's make the personal editing. Yeah, much better. Okay, I want to fix these. Uh-huh. I don't know how perfect you need, need you need it to be. This is also an area that doesn't really matter all that much. Like the you know this is the, the front is I think what I care about more. This is just the back area to make it a little bit nicer. You can get granular, very granular, how you how precise you want it to be. I'm sure there's also ways of just actually connecting the vertices and like creating a seamless uh, transition. Also notice that the exposure of my scan and the exposure of the 360 photo are different because the, yeah, I, guess, I mean, this is a combination of a lot of photos uh, between a ground a DSLR and a and sky, you know, a drone. I didn't do any post processing on the, on the photos themselves. So there's ways of making this much, much more seamless, but this is pretty much it. I'm happy with this. Um, what I want to, so the way to export this is just as the scene is go to file export FBX, let's say Soviet bus stop export. The thing to note is with Blender, um, you might need to include the textures of the scene, both of the scan and the sky box, because it might not export it um, as expected. So I'm just including them together in one area. And then 
upload it to Sketchfab as uh, as you wish. Boom. And that's it.